In terms of the side effect profile that we're expecting with uh, this, it's been very well tolerated. Very different side effect profile than what we see with the Brutinibar Idolelisib. A little bit of GI upset, but not the diarrhea that we sometimes see uh, in that setting, or a kind of feeling of bloating, that kind of, um, of a bit thing. A like a wheat intolerance. Kind uh, of a bit of that, kind, exactly. Um, but in general terms, this has been a very well tolerated um, uh, drug. The only slight, well, slight issue with it, of course, is this cautious way that we have to start until we ramp you up to, um, to the dose. And are you expecting sort of the tumor lysis to be an ongoing feature as we go through the dose escalation? So each time, well, like, you know, next this week we're starting on 25 milligrams. Yeah, 25. And then next week, 50. 50, 100, 200. Yeah. Will we go through this process? We'll each go time? through that process pretty much each time now. And some of those, in, you're also getting the infusion of the abinutus. So next week, you're getting yeah. the abinutuzumab and the ABT199 together. So we'll get you know that taken care of. Um, you fall into quite a low risk category. Uh, the antibodies already decrease the amount of CLL cells there, so that re reduces that risk. But we have seen some tumor lysis occur each time we go to the next dose. And of so, course we want a bit of tumor lysis, don't of we? Of course we want some tumor. Working. Tumor lysis is a sign that the drug is working very well. It just has to be carefully monitored. But in the end, it's a very um, good, um, good thing. And what we're seeing is that the combination of the antibody plus the ABT19 is actually making this an easier drug to administer. And worst case scenario, so you're going to be doing bloods every two hours mm -hmm. after the drug, I take the first drug. What happens if we start seeing? So if we start seeing, chemistry? if we start seeing changes in the chemistry, we'll take pretty aggressive action to reverse them, particularly if the potassium starts to go up. That's the thing that we'd be most um, concerned about. And we're not going to wait till things move out of the normal range. If we see any change, we'll kind of react to it and, and adapt things. And Sam and the team will be keeping very close watch um, on it. If you did develop any evidence of tumor lysis, we'd probably move you down to a ward where we could monitor and make sure there's nothing else going on with the heart rhythm, but that hasn't been an issue and not something I'm expecting to do. And of course, if you really did develop um, absolute tumor lysis, which I'm not expecting at all, then we'd be setting up to move you down to ITU to do the hemofiltration as a way of actually removing that. But, these are all things that we've got as a potential backup that I'm not expecting to happen. Okay, well, I just want to say thank you. It's been 18 months in the making for me to get this drug today. I'm well, very excited, and I still can't believe how I've ended up in London having met you in San Diego. Personally. Well, it just goes to show, I think the fates aligned yeah. um, to, for us to meet that day and just for you to be eligible to have this here. Um, I'm hoping very much that this drug is far enough along in its um, approval process that we would have been able to get it to you somehow. But I think we all agreed that you were at the time of needing treatment when we started mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. So it's, it's great that you've been able to come all the way across the, the world mm -hmm. just for this um, clinical trial and that we've, more importantly, we've got it available for you. Brilliant. Thank you. So any other questions about anything we're going to do today? No, I'm pretty excited now. I'm less nervous and more excited. Yeah, it is exciting, isn't it? Mm -hmm.